Heavy weapons have been removed from a planned demilitarized zone in Idlib. Turkey's state media say the Syrian opposition and what it called anti-regime armed groups complied with an October 10 deadline. It was the first major test of a deal with Russia to avoid a Syrian government offensive. A 20-kilometer zone will surround the rebel-controlled province that borders Turkey, which is overseeing its creation. So far, there is no opposition, particularly from Hayat Tahrir al-Shem, which controls most of the province. The armed group is considered a terrorist organization by the international community. It hasn't commented on the reported withdrawal, and it has yet to announce its position concerning the agreement, but it has been quietly complying. It is also required to withdraw its fighters, many of them foreigners, by October 15th. Experts who have been watching Hayat Tahrir al-Shem, or HTS's involvement over the years, say it is part of its policy of pragmatism, which began when it tried to rebrand itself by publicly disengaging from al-Qaeda. I mean, HTS it sees that it has no way out. So no way out, either it will go suicidal and keep uh, much of its uh, fighters who are committed to the ideology, or be pragmatic. Uh, keep its positions, trying to negotiate a deal with uh, the Turkish authorities. The Turkish government has been trying to convince HTS to disband and join the mainstream Syrian opposition. The most powerful alliance in Idlib is divided. Hayat Tahrir Sham has two wings. A conservative one that calls Turkey an enemy that's serving the regime and Russia. The other is led by Abu Muhammad al-Julani. He wants a diplomatic solution. Turkey used diplomacy and threatened force, and it was ready to mobilize its Syrian allies against those who oppose the deal. The deal is being implemented, but statements by Syrian government officials, including President Bashar al-Assad, are raising concern. Assad said the deal is temporary and Idlib will ultimately return to state control, but many believe it will be outside players, particularly Russia and Turkey, who will decide the future of Syria's north. A new front line has now been created between opposition fighters and Syrian government troops. It's expected to remain quiet, but the deal doesn't decide the fate of Idlib province as a whole, and it doesn't end the war. Zena Khudr al-Jazeera, Beirut.